Okay, good afternoon everybody and welcome to this webinar with myself and the absolutely fantastic Katie Glenn. We're going to be talking to you today about the rules that are associated to money. Now you might be sitting there going, Claire, what are you talking about rules? What rules are there with money? Well, the world that we live in today is really, really very different to the world that we lived in even 10 years ago. And because of that, it means that everything has changed fundamentally. And nowadays, we've got to be so much cuter with our money and with how we handle it and how we manage it and how we earn it and how many streams of income we actually have coming towards us. So what I wanted to bring to you today was some knowledge about how we can do these things differently. And one of the ways I wanted to do that was to bring in the absolutely amazing Katie Glenn, who is a master strategist in the area of mindset when it comes to money. So, Kate, amazing to have you here. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, Claire. Lovely to be here. How are you? I'm really well. I'm really well. And I'm really looking forward to this conversation that we're going to have because in the, the short time that we're going to be here with um, with everybody that's listening, we're going to give them some really, really key information. So. Okay, can I start off with kind of you telling people a little bit about you and, and why you have got an authority to, to sit here and talk about what it is that you know about money mindset and how you can change it. Tell us a little bit about your story. Okay, yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about when, you know, when I was really bad with money. And, um, you know, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Katie Glenn, and I help people get over the the hidden invisible blocks that hold them back in their business and issues around money are very, very common from things like setting prices properly, asking for the sale, chasing invoices, managing their money, managing cash flow. And, you know, I'm really excited about next week's event. You know, we're all on a path of learning and I'm personally really looking forward to seeing people like Judy May, John Lee, Sahail, Jack Franku and Claire, and of course yourself, Claire. And, you know, I think it's fantastic and I'm really grateful you've personally invested so much time and energy putting on that event because the skills of learning, learning about money are so important and as you say they're more so than ever before you know the landscape of our environment 10 years ago is completely different from what it is now totally. and I certainly wasn't taught how to deal with money and respect it when I was school and though you know both of my parents were entrepreneurs I picked up some very, very bad money habits along the way. Um, so to give you a little bit of background about me, my personal money story, I used to work in advertising and marketing agencies for about 12 years, and most of that time was spent as a single mum. As a single mum, I was paying for everything. I didn't get anything from, from my father, uh, son's father. Um, so if you're on this call now and you're listening and you're struggling with money yourself at the moment, I, I get it. So for example, like 12 years ago, I was working at an agency in Putney and I was earning about £30,000 a year, which you know at the time would have been quite nice if I had a partner and I hadn't had a child. And I'd take home sort of like about £2,000 a month. But my nursery fees were £1,000. And in, none, in those days, there was none of this child tax credits or help with your nursery nursery payments, um, I had to pay mortgage, council tax, service charges, food and the gas, electric and everything. So I was always in debt and always, because there was not enough money at the end of the month, I was spending on credit cards. And when you're in that kind of situation, you kind of think, well, there's nothing I can do about it. How can I change that? You know, going on the dole and claiming benefit wasn't an option, you know, even if I wanted to, because picking up work voluntarily, you don't get benefit. So it's kind of stuck. Well, I thought at the time I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. And quite frankly, that time I didn't really see a way around it until my son had left nursery and was at school and I've been promoted in my career. And, um, you know, that was the only time I thought I'd be able to make some more money. And even though I'd seen my mum and dad set up and grow their own businesses, at the time I didn't think about doing that. I didn't know what I'd do, didn't know what I'd sell, thought it was a lot of hassle. Because um, they'd always work really long hours, and I was working long enough hours being employed. I thought, oh, it's a lot of hassle, and I don't want to do that. I was also really, really irresponsible when it came to money. And I, you know, looking back, even as a teenager and as a child, I was irresponsible. You know, when it came to my bills coming through the post, I, what I'd do is I'd pop them in a box, 
and I've lived them for about six months. And you know, fortunately, most of my main bills were at least on direct debit. But when they come through the post, I knew they weren't going to be good news, so I'd just put them in a box. And once every six or twelve months, I'd open a bottle of wine and go through them. And sometimes I'd be pleasantly surprised, and other times really irritated with myself because it would cost me money in like a fine or something. And that's that's really common, Kate. You know, what you've just described is is so, so mm. common. And, you know, doing what I do, I've come across that so many times where people are in that situation. And just, just share with the audience, Kate, how did that feel at the time? Because it sounds like a pretty, you know, sort of difficult existence that you have in there. Tell, tell us a little bit about, you know, how did you deal with it? Um, well, you just kind of accept that that's the only way that you can make money you know that's the only that's the only way that I knew at the time I didn't have the education or the information that I didn't need to live my life like that and so it's stressful yeah um you do kind of you get irresponsible with it because you think well there's nothing I can do about it I'll stick it on the credit card and what I would do is every year I'd normally get a bonus from my work and then I'd stick that on the credit card and that would pay that off yeah okay um, and over time, you know, like when Lex is in school and I've moved around different agencies, I was earning a better salary and then I did have more money and it wasn't quite that same situation. So I kind of invested quite a lot in my, in, in going to work rather than, you know, what other people might do is not work or they, they claim benefits or things. So, but I was still responsible with that money when I did start to earn it. And, you know, if I think about the money and the time that I fitted on things like Starbucks and pret and lunch and stuff that I didn't really need. And knowing what I know now, I certainly would have invested it better. But, you know, you kind of live and learn and it's better to know it now than, than, than never at all. Yeah, and, and, and I think was... you've highlighted some really, really valuable lessons there. You've highlighted that, you know, you kind of had to go through that to, to make you want to change it, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was also at work, I was very disillusioned with the work and that's another story which I'll probably share a little bit about that next week because it's quite long to go into yeah um, which is what inspired me to leave and then set up my own business yeah. but when I was at those agencies you know I was pretty good at making money for companies and the companies I've worked for and, and this is one thing that I've noticed with a lot of self-employed people people that run their own businesses it's very easy to make money for other people yeah. And again, we'll be talking about that in more depth next week. But on a personal level, my own personal money management was rubbish. And as you say, I know I wasn't alone. You know, some people are better with it than others, and others are worse with money. But I suspect most people in the general population don't deal with their money as effectively as they could either. And, you know, a few years ago, you know, only just a few years ago, what, five, six years ago, you could kind of get away with that. But today, in today's economy, there's just not that room for error and people can't afford to make big mistakes with their money. No, you're absolutely right there. I think that the, the difficulty that we've got today is, you know, inflation is kind of so out of control, really. And, and if you're listening to this and you, know, you don't really understand the impact of inflation, uh, the simplest way that I can explain it to you is quite simply the, the cost of what we pay, you know, what we buy something today for £10 and the cost of that gives us you know the value for 10 pounds today what we could have bought 10 years ago with it is very very different obviously the one um factor that affects everybody that is completely uncontrollable is the cost of fuel because well, i say uncontrollable it's controllable in the respect that you know people can drive their cars in a slightly more sensible way and they can choose the journeys that they do but a lot of people are really reliant on their vehicles and so it is almost uh, you can't you know you can't cut that out because you've got to have it. Mm. So I think you're absolutely right. It's it's very critical today on how different it is and and how we have to view it in a very very different way because the cost of living is so variable, um, and it's 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 entities that are out of our control, which mm. stem from the fact that pu that simply we get encouraged to spend too much of our income on our necessities and in the money management model that I teach that I'm going to be sharing at the boot camp next weekend is very very strategic with how you actually manage your money daily and that was one of the things that you hit on like you said you know I kind of I knew that I was always going to run out of, of money at the end of the month but actually what I wasn't able to do was see how, how I could do something differently about that 
So can you mm. tell us a little bit about how you got into the field that you're now in then? What was the thing that kind of triggered it and said, actually, yeah, that looks like something that could really be for me? Because obviously what you do now is very different to the advertising world. Um, about 10 years ago, um, I was just over 10 years, 11 years ago, I was seeing a, seeing a guy and um, got on really well with him and um, I had about nine months before this happened I had a prediction that um, this guy Dan was was going to die. I used to drink quite a lot and um, he one, one day he came in and we were just chatting and there was a story in the paper with um, the guy who drowned in Michael Barrymore's pool. pool. Yeah. And um, I said to him, I sat there and I said, Dan, you know, if you carry on drinking, you are going to end up like that. And nine months later, that's exactly what did happen. And I predicted that the week before as well. And um, he drowned in an actor's house in, in a swimming pool. And it was all over the papers the next day. And it totally, totally messed up with my mind. I saw a very different side to the industry that I was working in because up until then you know you was working advertising in your 20s and it's fun and you come out drinking and partying with your colleagues and, and you know it's quite uh, a social industry but I saw a totally different side of that industry when it was reported and it really put me off I also didn't understand where that information had come to me from and you know it sounds bonkers on a sort of a logical level but I now understand why. I went through a whole journey of therapy, seeing various counsellors and therapists and lying on tables and having crystals dangled all over me and stuff. And it wasn't until I got to hypnosis that I started to feel better. I then decided to do a hypnotherapy and NLP training. And I then I could see a way that I could leave work, have more time with my son and earn a decent to, uh, earn a decent living from doing something different and it was kind of going back to the roots of when I was at university I studied psychology but when I studied psychology I learned a lot about people and but unfortunately not enough about how to fix them and since that training I've done much more advanced training and um, very advanced hypnosis and hypnosis techniques so what I do with clients now is I combine my old marketing strategy with the, the mindset work that I do. But that was really what in, inspired me to leave. I just saw a completely different side of the industry. I didn't feel cool with it. And I was selling things to people that didn't really want to buy it. Yeah. And a lot of the stuff that I was selling was crap. And um, unhealthy stuff, chocolates and biscuits and various different things for different clients to then selling something to people that's actually going to change and um, empower them. So does that answer your question? It does, it does. So tell us a little bit more about the hypnosis because you gave me a really great quote, Kate, and, and that's the one that all of you can see on the screen here, and that's give me the child until he's mm. seven and I'll give you the man. So can you explain to us a little bit about what that really means and how hypnosis comes into that? Yeah, absolutely. In the mind. Well, when it comes to money, I think there's three reasons why people mess up with it. And that's A, they don't have a good, solid financial education. B, they don't manage or deal with their money responsibly. And C, their mindset about money needs some serious attention. And that quote, Show Me the Child at Seven by Francis Xavier, Show Me the Child at Seven and I'll Show You the Man, is absolutely true. Most of our, well, the mind works like a computer, so you get what you program it for. And up until about the age of five or six, we grow up learning things and soaking information from the world around us like a sponge. Okay. And that's when we learn to walk, talk, read, write, or starting to read and write. We learn how to interact with people, our relationship patterns. It's almost like we've got programs that are running and that are starting to form from that information. Okay. We'll learn the sort of things, how successful we're going to be in life. That all starts getting set up very, very early on. And also our attitudes, our fundamental attitudes and feelings towards money are embedded before the age of about five or six. 
Okay. Um, it's only really when we get to sort of the age of five or six that that's when we develop our conscious thinking, so our everyday thinking, and that is, you know, it's a bit like um, a bit like the editor of the newspaper. It's really it's just got the the latest information, the latest news, whereas in the background all that information that's been built up is stored in what's our subconscious mind, and everything you've ever heard, thought, felt, seen, etc. Is, is in the back end in those programs. So some people will grow up with a great attitude towards money because of the, the programming they've got from mum, teacher, dad, from the telly or whatever. And then some people get information that's just gone in that's either incorrect or it's missing. And that again, we'll be talking more in depth about the two ways that those in, that incorrect or missing information is, is formed and created and how that can be corrected at next week's event. Okay. But the trouble is, even if you did learn a great attitude towards money and a really good solid money program, what you may have learned is now out of date. Because yeah. it's not just the attitude, it's like the rules of wealth have changed. What was true 20, 30, 40 years ago isn't anymore. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree with that. And personally I think that's that's to do with a number of things. Globalization has got a big part of it. You know, if we were to think 30, 40 years ago, if you were to buy something in the UK, chances are it would have been made in the UK. Yeah. A lot of that's now being outsourced. You know, yeah. it's been done yeah. cheaper and quicker and better in China or the Far East, somewhere else in the Far East. Um, because we've, you know, we've now really moved out of, I know that um, Robert Kiyosaki talks about we've moved out of the industrial age into the information age. So in the industrial age, industrial age you know, beginning of well, most of last century was about you could make money by doing things quicker, faster, cheaper. Yeah. And it was very functional. Yeah. Now we've moved into more, you know, Robert Kiyosaki talks about it being the information age, other people talk about connection economy, but these things really have come about because of the internet. And the internet has made so much more information available to people. They don't have to go to one place that they might have gone years ago. And its ability to connect from, you know, not just, you know, our local economy, but globally is unprecedented. We've never had this before, which gives us many more opportunities. Um, but it, then it still, it still just changed the whole landscape of the economy. And what I see or what I, I feel is that we've that those things have made things like big business much more unattractive to people. So they don't employ people locally, say for example in the UK, as much as they would have done in the past. A lot of that gets outsourced. Um, we've also got things like the, uh, the the internet and having information available has meant that it's almost like the lid has been lifted, that we've had all these big secrets that have been hidden away for years and years are now out in the open. We had the global uh, financial crisis, 2007, 2008, that yes. changed people's perceptions and of the whole banking industry fundamentally. It's a bit like someone, you know, you've seen somebody in the changing room and they're knickers in their bra and you, you wouldn't have expected to see that. Your perception of them you can't take that back. You've seen it. Uh, we've got things like um, the supermarkets more recently being caught with selling horse meat and not telling people in the supermarkets. Totally. Do you think they trust the supermarkets as much as they did? I absolutely got, agree. You know, things that. like the uh, oh. hmm, paedophilia, which has been rife in, in the BBC and we're seeing stories coming out on that almost daily since Jimmy Savile was exposed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the NHS, you know, these are all people or organisations that once were where people turned to for authority, and that authority isn't there anymore. No. So where do you go? It is. It's a very different world, and and you know, and everything you've said is is so so true. And I think that you know, I wrote an article about a month ago about the fact that let's let's bounce back 10 years and Facebook didn't even exist 
Um, mm -hmm. Whereas nowadays, we know that statistics tell us, statistics tell us even that 48% of people, the first thing that they do in the morning is go straight on Facebook to see what's happening. And, and, and I think that you, you're really, really right. It's all of these things coupled together mean that in one respect, it's a hell of a lot easier for us to make money. But then in another respect, also, there's a huge amount of decisions for us to make. So what a lot of people mm. will do is shy away and just not make a decision at all. And not yeah, the ostrich forward. in the sand, isn't it? Yeah, because, you know, it's, it's well, actually, I'm, I'm not going to look at this because I don't know what to look at. And also, because again, we know that there's a lot of scams out there. We know that there's a lot of things where people you know in the words of ron seal it doesn't do what it says on the tin so you know mm -hmm. people are also then quite dubious that they don't want to get ripped off as well aren't they absolutely and that whole big trust that trust for the big organizations the big companies if it hasn't gone already it's going yeah. um, smaller and medium-sized businesses have got a great 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 opportunity because they can be they can react quicker faster and they can be much more creative. And also, you know, because we think about the economy, how it used to be, it was very functional. People bought things to do things, whereas now people want things personal. They want things special, unique, unique to them. Even things, you know, if you think about, for example, like the iPod, everybody's iPod is different. You can personalize it. You can have a different yeah. back, you can have a different cover, you've got different pictures that you have inside. You personalize which apps you want in there. And people are demanding that that unique create creativeness which an individual or a smaller business can deliver which is obviously is, is a fantastic opportunity yeah absolutely so the trouble uh, is go on. yeah the, the trouble is most people in this country are still in that mindset you know obviously it's it, people some people are much more open to this now but there's still a huge great number of the population that are still relying on one source of income and that is their job you know, and it's imagine, you know, if you imagine if you had a business that relied on one customer, clearly that would be a very foolish, risky strategy. But that's what most people do when they had a job. That's what I did. Just thought, well, that's where you get your money from, from the job. How else? But that's not true. No, no, it's mm. not. And, and again, it's, it's about learning about those multiple income streams. And that's one of the things that we're going to be really honing in a lot at the Success Boot Camp is about how to create those multiple streams of income. But most importantly, how to reprogram that mindset and that that sort of money story that you've got running currently mm. and reprogram it into one of your choice because everything you've explained is that actually we don't create our own blueprint do we it's created by the people around us so it's not of our making so usually we're actually just trying to deal with you know the, the the problem rather than going back to the source and saying well actually what's the source what you know what's the root of the issue instead of just dealing with the issue and it almost seems like a little bit of the wrong way around to do it for a lot of people doesn't it but it's absolutely the right way to do it so basically absolutely. It's back to basics yeah what are you back to basics do? What are you going to be talking to us about at the Success Boot Camp? Because I'm really thrilled that you've, you're one of the fabulous speakers that I've got. And I know that you're oh, going to be sharing you. some really key information. So can you give the audience just a little bit of a snippet of what they're going to learn from you? I'm going to be talking about mindset, how the mind works, why it's so difficult to change without the right tools or the correct tools to make yeah. those changes. And I'm going to be explaining how these little problems, I call them mind viruses, are created in the first instance. Okay. And there's two key ways that those mind viruses are created. Okay. And okay. more importantly, how you can change them. Okay. And change them on a permanent basis, not on a, you know, on a willpower, thinking about changing basis, but on a permanent basis. And... I'm hoping this is going to be quite exciting and new information for people. I know there's a lot of coaches and a lot of people that do this kind of thing that are, are, are on the market, but I hope you'll be sharing some information that is new to people at the guests at your event next week. Brilliant. And I think, you know, one of the things that, you know, we've all been, most of us in this country have been brought up with is that, you know, go to school, work hard get good exams, get a good job, or even, you know, just go to school and get a job. Mantra. It's the programme that they've been brought up with. Yeah. You know, that's, I was yeah. certainly brought up with that. And that is really what needs to be changed. And you need a much more creative approach and open approach to creating wealth and keeping wealth. 
yeah and that that again that's really really key because because the reality is with a lot of people they just kind of don't really know what they want they think they want to be millionaires you know everybody kind of says oh I want to be a millionaire but actually in reality a lot of people really don't they mm -hmm. but they've never actually taken the time to think about why they want it and and I think again that's really really key so from your point of view Kate why do you think it's really important for people to come to the event next weekend well as I said before you know three reasons are that I see that people don't have a great money story because they haven't got a good financial education they've never learned it at school I was never taught how to deal with money or yeah. look after it or what various things it can seem a bit scary like anything new yeah you don't absolutely. if you don't know what it's about, you kind of shy away, away from it, and that's just human nature. Yeah. So financial education, how to deal with the money, and how to manage it properly and responsibly, and taking that responsible action. And of course, you know, there's myself that's going to be talking about mindset. I know that Judy May, I'm really interested to see see her again this, this week, next weekend, and Claire, and, and, and of course yourself, around that mindset that needs some yeah, serious attention. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and I know that, you know, I'm going to be sharing a lot of practical information about how to change these things, because it's not just about, um, you know, it's not just about the, the focus, as you say, you know, there's three key areas. It, it's, the, it's the education you've got, it's the mindset and it's the management of the money. So I'm going to be sharing. And they all fit together. They're all they just do. as important as each other. You can't have one without the other. No, hand in hand. And, and you know, and again, the knowledge that I'm going to be sharing is going to come very much from my background in the financial services and, and understanding what makes people tick. Because I dealt with thousands of people, as you know, when I was working in the industry. And, and what I saw was a lot of common traits with those people. And it always came down mm. to a lack of money management, a lack of knowledge about money, and also having the wrong mindset. Like you say, it was a it was a forced, I'm going to make the change rather than actually going back in and reprogramming. So I think that mm. it's very, very key. And and as you say, you know, the importance of this for people is, is, you know, I always say to people quite simply, can you really afford not to take this action? Because it costs you thousands and thousands to make mistakes. And as you said earlier in, in this call, you said, you know, I, I, there were occasions when I did get that bottle of wine and, you know, decided to sort of delve into that box and open everything. that I really kicked myself because I'd seen that I'd cost myself quite a lot of money and just hadn't even realised that I was doing that. So I think that's absolutely mm. critical, really, really critical. So if you can... Absolutely. And I think also as well, when the, people, the guests come as well, if they've got kids, it's information that they can pass on to their children so they don't have to go through, make the same silly mistakes that... We've probably done. Well, I know I certainly have. Yeah, well, yeah. And I think things. Yeah, I think things in school are starting to change. For example, I went to um, my son's GCSE options uh, evening about two months ago, and totally different from my options evening at GCSE. Uh, the deputy head he sat down and said, "Now, boys and girls, you there's some subjects that you have to do, and it's the law. So put that aside, but." If you choose the GCSE options, choose the subjects that you're interested in and that you enjoy. Choose those because you're far more likely to do better, do well at them than the ones you don't. Yeah, and it's very rare um, to hear that, isn't it? Yeah. So things are changing, but you know, if you've got children as well, please, please do do make sure you make the time to come here. I know that everyone's going to be working really hard, and there's going to be a lot of information, but it's critical information that you need to know yeah absolutely absolutely so I, I i can't really add much to that kate because you're absolutely right you know we've got to think about the future generation because we've got a whole generation coming up where you know they are very much um reliant on on credit and they're very reliant on their parents as well because mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of parents out there that really aren't educating their kids in the way that they need to about standing on their own two feet so we do have a, you know a large amount and, and as we know statistics tell us in the country that the highest rate of unemployment is between 18 to 25 year olds and, oh absolutely and it's, there were some statistics out earlier this week i don't know if you saw in the daily mail font of all knowledge yeah. um that the number of needs female needs so not in education or work yeah um has shot up in the first three months of this year in terms of girls it's gone up by twenty six thousand. you know these are young kids that should be going out into the world and having a future and be excited about it and they're left with that and 
we really have responsibility to help those people. Actually, what we do There's is... also a some, um, statistic that was... Mm, there's also a statistic in the FT earlier this week about you know the young job jobless fueling the growth in UK startups, and so there was a YouGov study that said 30 percent of young you know, there was about 1500 1600 people interviewed 30 percent these younger people believed that they would be self-employed within five years. So it's a huge shift from maybe I don't know what the stats were when I was a kid. But most people will be expecting to get a job, not being self-employed. And so we really do need that education. There's this mindset of the self-employed person or has someone who has their own business is completely different from employee. And we need to get that information out there, do you say education, management and, and mindset to help, you know, ourselves now and also to help our kids. Yeah, absolutely. And and that's one of the things I'm going to be teaching at, at the boot camp is, is the cash flow quadrant, which some of you listening could be very familiar with and others of you could be sitting there saying, I don't really understand what you're talking about there, Claire. But quite simply, the cash flow quadrant is the various different ways that we earn money. And you, you've hit a really key thing there because historically, you know, kind of 95, uh, 90% even of the population globally sat in the employed quadrant. And, and only 5% sat in the self-employed quadrant. So obviously that figure is, is moving dramatically because of what we're seeing nowadays out there in the worlds of employment. And I also think that the, because of the, the information age and this world of, of online that we now live in, people want more choice and they want more freedom with what they do. And to a certain degree, having your own business completely allows you to do that if you run it effectively and in the right mm. way. Absolutely. And people want, you know, people are demanding now, they want things unique, special, and the individual or the small group of people can deliver that. The business, big business that people don't trust anymore can't. No, absolutely. It's a great opportunity. Absolutely. So on that, I'm, I'm going to kind of say thanks so much for your amazing 30 minutes of power there, Kate, because that was really, really great bit of information you've just shared. And I will pop up a link um, below this video so you can have um, a little look at the Success Boot Camp. We have got an offer on the tickets at the moment at £97 only. So it's absolutely phenomenal value for money. Um, and oh, absolutely. Said, That's a steal. Yeah, we've got absolute steal. We've got some amazing speakers. You know, I've pulled together currently the the best speakers in Europe that are coming to speak at the Success Boot Camp. So, you know, really, if you've got any question about whether you should be attending this, I think it's kind of a, you know, from my point of view, it's it's a absolutely you must because I'm not going to do what a lot of these events do, which is you know give you just some some basic bit of content you're going to be getting a lot of content you're going to be getting a lot of how to make these changes but most importantly everybody that leaves the boot camp is going to leave with a clear plan of what they can go and do and what they can do differently um and and you know that's without actually buying anything because again a lot of people are sell 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 obviously you know we are going to be talking to you about how you can work with some of the speakers um but if you choose not to do that, you will have enough material that you're going to leave with that you can make big changes. So check it out at www.clairetournermarshall, all lowercase, all one word, dot com forward slash boot camp sales forward slash and check out the information there. So as I say, tickets are literally £97, which is an absolute bargain. Really hope that we're going to see you there next week. And Kate. Thank you so much for your time on this call. Thank you. I, I really look forward to seeing you again next week, Claire. Yeah, me too. And I'm, I'm I know I'm going to learn a lot as well. Yeah, absolutely. So thanks so much, everybody, for listening. And uh, we Thank will you. hopefully see you on Friday the 7th in London at the Success Boot Camp to get you filled up with all the knowledge that you need to go out there and change things for you big time. So thanks very much, Kate. Goodbye, everybody, Thank and you. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, this little session that we've brought to you today. Thanks, then.